I'm Abby Phillip with This Week with George Stephanopoulos, and I'm here with Chris Hughes, a publisher and editor-in-chief of The New Republic uh, and co-founder of Facebook. And because we believe all politics is social here at This mm -hmm. Week, we're taking some of your questions on Facebook to Chris. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Uh, so we have our first question from Karen Jansen, who wants to know what you think your most meaningful contribution to Facebook was. Ooh, well, uh, when we started Facebook about 10 years ago, we were trying to do something pretty simple, enable people to connect to their friends, their family, and uh, the people that they cared about. What's amazing is the Facebook that we started then was incredibly basic. You know, Each person had a profile, but you had one photo, you had your favorite interests, and you didn't even have basic things like messaging or uh, commenting or the wall. So the Facebook that exists now is, is uh, leaps and bounds uh, ahead of what we did then. Some of the stuff that I really enjoyed working on was um, the initial photos feature, which enabled people to tag their friends, which seems like second nature now, but um, was, uh, was new on the internet then. Yeah. Um, some of the things like the poke, uh, the messaging, that sort of stuff, which all, again, right. seems antiquated in 2013, but was, uh, but was new in 2004. A lot of people are very interested in the fact that you, at 29, you've had all this success. At, in your college dorm room, you helped start Facebook. Linda Rogitz wants to know, uh, how do you do it all? <laughs> Uh, it's been a busy, busy few years. Um, no, it's uh, you know one of the key things, whether it was with Facebook or or now at the New Republic, is to be surrounded by really talented people. And um, right now, I've, uh, whether it's the, the editor that I have, uh, my chief operating officer, the people who run the ads team, um, it's really an unparalleled group of of people. And so. I wouldn't be able to do anything, whether it's what I'm doing now or, or a few years ago, without the help of really smart people around me. Uh, and Thomas Nixon relatedly wants to know, as a young someone who wants to be a young entrepreneur, what advice do you have for him uh, if, if he wants to start a business in the next five or ten years? Well, it really depends on what the what the field is. If it's an internet company, one of the things that's amazing is that the cost of entry, the cost of creating something new, is very low. So you can learn a few basic skills, you can become a coder, and the next thing you know, you have an app in the app store, you have a you have a website up. And in that sphere, I think it's great just to try it out and experiment. You know, whether it's something you do in the on the evenings or the weekends, there's um, very uh, there are very few limits for innovation. In other fields, of course, it's a little bit more challenging. You know, oftentimes you need more capital investment, you need more uh, you need deeper skills and familiarity. Um, and in those things, I think really pursuing. Um, uh, an education and finding the human resources, friends and family and experts that you can rely on is incredibly important. And this week, a new iteration of The New Republic this is going to be launched, <laughs> and this magazine is almost 100 years old. We have a question from Rosemary Holt, um, who wants to know, what are you going to do to preserve this paper, this magazine's historic mission, and what can people expect so with the redesigned uh, New Republic, we're trying to hold on to this 100-year-old tradition of doing um, uh, deep analysis on politics and culture. But we're also trying to broaden that and cover everything from technology to science to, uh, to the world of ideas in a way that's really accessible, in a way that feels like it invites you in as a reader. So I think that in 2013, in order to do that, we have to have a website where you can listen to our content, where you can uh, engage in social conversations with it, and where it's just as easy to read it on your iPhone as it is um, on your on your computer screen. So, when we expand the the company from uh, where it's been historically, it's about broadening the the content that we provide, but also making sure that it's as easy as possible to to not only read it but also discuss it. So your um, friend. Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> uh, recently announced that he would be hosting a fundraiser for a Republican Governor Chris Christie. What do you make of that sort of odd pairing? And um, we have a question from Carol Stanton who wants to know, are you going to go with the Dem candidate since <laughs> Zuckerberg is going with Christie? One of the things I love about Mark is that he's, he's not a predictable person um, when it comes to technology or, or politics. I mean, I for one have, um, have uh, a lot of questions about Chris Christie, particularly because Less than a year ago, he vetoed a marriage equality bill in the New Jersey uh, state legislature, which for me personally, I got married to my husband uh, last June, was just really personally frustrating. I mean, there are uh, tens of thousands of couples in New Jersey that can't 
uh, share their love and be recognized under the law because of that decision. And so I'm not a single issue voter, and I think um, most people aren't either. But um, you know, f for me personally, it would it would raise serious concerns about supporting someone like him. And your involvement in politics in 2008, you helped President Obama with his digital strategy. You were credited with a lot of the successes there. You also recently interviewed President Obama for the magazine. And did. what was that like? It was an incredible opportunity. I mean, um, we see our role at the New Republic as um, one where we want to ask hard questions of our leaders. And, um, you know, whether whatever you may think about uh, President Obama, I think one of the things that is in the history of the New Republic and the press in general is to hold our leaders accountable. So we got a chance to go to the Oval Office, uh, Frank Foer, the editor of the New Republic, and I, and sit down with him for 45 minutes and, um, and have a wide-ranging conversation about everything from Syria to economic policy to guns and to football, which, uh, which was, which was a, a really wonderful opportunity for us. And I, I hope we'll give our readers uh, an additional dimension into what's going on in the president's mind uh, as he starts his second term. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. And thank you to everyone who submitted questions online. Be sure to follow us at This Week ABC on Twitter and like us on Facebook at This Week ABC.